Hi, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on VSDs, ventricular septal defects. Okay, um, VSD is a common type of hole in the heart. Okay, let me just show you. So here is uh, the heart. This is the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle here. This is the septum and basically a VSD is a hole which connects the left heart to the right heart, the left ventricle to the right ventricle, a hole through this septum. That's what a VSD is. Um, now, VSDs can be congenital, and in fact, most of them are, meaning that you're born with them, or they can be acquired, which means that, that something happens to the heart, like a heart attack, and that causes damage to this part of the heart muscle, and that can then cause uh, a hole to develop. So they can be acquired, but the majority of them are congenital. It's worth note noting that they can occur at any point uh, along this septum, this ventricular septum, and uh, they can be isolated, they can be one or they can be multiple. The most important determinant of how important, how what the VSD means for the patient is the size of the VSD, the hole, the size of the hole. The bigger the hole, the bigger the problems associated with it, the smaller the hole, the less likelihood of problems. Having a hole has lots of implications, particularly a VSD. Having a VSD has lots of implications um, uh, on, on the heart in general, and I'll try and go through them one at a time. The first thing to understand is that what will happen is the heart is usually, the left heart will usually pump blood through this aortic valve around the heart. If you have a hole in the heart, then what will happen is as this part of the heart tries to contract, the blood, instead of all going out into the body, some of it will go through the hole into the right heart. And therefore, the rest of the body will get less blood than it is used to. What this then means is that the kidneys, which are very sensitive to any reduction in blood volume, will think the patient is dehydrated. And a series of things happen within the kidneys, which mean that the kidneys can then absorb more water from the urine and to try and restore the circulating volume. So the kidneys will absorb more volume and therefore try and restore this volume. So what that then means is that there's more volume in the whole system, right? Because we never were dehydrated. It was just that part of the blood was going somewhere else and not getting to the kidneys. So let's say you the, the ventricle contracts and 20% leaks back into the right heart. So the kidneys will only get 80%. So the kidneys will then aim to absorb 20% from the urine uh, and therefore restore the circulating volume. But now what you have is a problem where you have 120%. You don't have 100% because that 20% had just leaked back. So in the system, you have 120%. And therefore, what will then happen is more blood will leak through pole and therefore you can get into a vicious cycle and the consequence of getting into this vicious cycle is the the body starts filling up with fluid vsds are a condition of volume overload the amount of volume in our system increases because of this leak the problem with that is that the heart has to eventually contain all this volume so the heart will start stretching and although initially when the heart is stretching it will pump with more vigor at a certain point, it will stretch to the extent where it will lose its elasticity. So if you leave a VSD, a big VSD, and you don't do anything about it, one of the problems is that the left heart can slowly get bigger, dilate, and get weaker. And you develop a condition called left heart failure. So that's one problem. The second problem, and again, very important indeed, is this, that when this part of the heart contracts, it's pumping blood through the hole into the right heart. The problem is that the right heart is also contracting at that time and therefore what can happen is that the blood, what will happen is that the blood that is being pumped through goes not into the right ventricle but gets pumped straight into this artery called the pulmonary artery here. So you have a large volume of blood going through this pulmonary artery and what can happen over a period of time is that this increased volume of blood can trigger changes in the pulmonary blood vessels, the blood vessels that go up to the lungs, and it can damage them. And then these vessels lose their elasticity, and when they lose their elasticity, they don't stretch as well, and therefore it becomes more difficult, progressively more difficult, for the right heart to pump blood into the lungs.
This condition is called pulmonary hypertension. This is a really big problem because progressively it becomes more and more difficult for the right heart to try and pump blood through. Number three, another problem with a VSD is this. As you can see, the septum is over here. If you have a hole right over here, just where you have the aortic valve, then what can happen sometimes is that as this blood gets pushed through the VSD to the other side, it can suck uh, part of the aortic valve and that can cause leaking of the aortic valve. That's another problem with VSDs. Finally, um, a VSD can sometimes become infected because the blood is going in and the hemodynamics of the blood are altered. If you have a infection in the bloodstream, then there's a possibility that those bugs could sit on the VSD in, on, that, on the peripheries of that hole. And that can be quite difficult to eradicate because infection within the heart can be very dangerous, can be very difficult to eradicate and can require prolonged antibiotics. And that is called infective endocarditis. And patients with a VSD are more likely to suffer from endocarditis. The next question is, how is a VSD diagnosed? The definitive diagnosis is made by an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart. The ultrasound is usually very easy to pick up large VSDs. You can not only see the hole, you can measure the size of the hole, you can assess its location, you can assess what effect is happening to the left heart. Is the left heart getting bigger and weaker? You can assess what's happening to the right heart. Is are the pulmonary artery pressures going up because of all this damage to the pulmonary blood vessels from this increased flow to the lungs? You can try and work out using this an echocardiogram as to how it can be closed. And finally, um, you can also look for things like aortic regurgitation, the leaking valve that I spoke about. And of course, if there is infection, sometimes you can see clumps of infection around the VSD and they're called vegetation. So an echocardiogram is the gold standard way of um, assessing a VSD. How do these uh, patients come to attention? First and foremost, coincidentally. So, you know, one of the things with a hole in the heart is that as the blood squirts through the hole, it creates turbulence and that turbulence is manifest as a noise. So patients with a VSD often have a murmur and often it's a loud murmur and a very harsh murmur, which is audible very easily by most doctors. It is worth realizing one thing, that the smaller the hole, the louder the murmur. The bigger the hole, and the less loud the murmur. So just because you have a very loud murmur doesn't mean that you have a very big VSD. On the contrary, if you have a big VSD, you're going to have a softer murmur than uh, a small VSD, which by definition doesn't tend to be as harmful to the body. That's one way. The second way is that the patient may complain of symptoms. Common symptoms are breathlessness, effort intolerance, sometimes dizziness, and also the symptoms of heart failure, which means that because all this extra volume has been created within the body, that volume cannot be accommodated within the system and therefore it leaks out. So people with advanced complications associated with the VSD like heart failure will complain of progressive leg swelling, progressive abdominal swelling, um, more breathlessness, inability to do as much dizziness, sometimes palpitations as well. So that's another mechanism by which patients come to attention. Finally, uh, the changes to the heart because of the VSD can trigger off ECG abnormalities and those ECG abnormalities may be picked up on a routine ECG in particular because the right heart tends to be affected. Patients develop things like right bundle branch block and evidence of pulmonary hypertension on the ECG which you can detect. So those are the ways that uh, a patient with a VSD comes to attention. The next question to ask is, well, what do you do about them? If you've been diagnosed with a VSD, what do you do about it? Now, the first thing to say is many very small VSDs will just close spontaneously. So if you've been born with a VSD and it's a tiny VSD, there's a good chance it may just close by itself. Even bigger VSDs can get smaller with time. So that's um, reassuring. And the patients in whom the VSD has closed spontaneously have an excellent prognosis. So, you know, they don't get infections because the VSD is closed. They don't develop pulmonary hypertension because the VSD is closed. They don't develop left heart failure. The patients who have bigger VSDs, those are far more um, worrying because the hole is unlikely to close on its own. And the consequences of having this hole will trigger off these abnormalities within the heart structure, which can be permanent. 
The big risk in patients with VSD is the development of pulmonary hypertension, this irreversible damage to the lung vessels because of this increased flow continuously going through them. And at all points, what we want to do is stop that from happening because that can be an irreversible process. One of the big problems with that kind of thing is that once pulmonary hypertension develops and becomes advanced, you cannot close the hole because it becomes so difficult for the right heart to pump blood through into the lungs that you need an outlet for this blood to go back into the left heart, otherwise the right heart will fail just because it cannot get the blood through. So if you close the VSD after the patient has developed advanced pulmonary hypertension, then patients do very badly. So you want to try and do something before pulmonary hypertension develops. In my practice, with the very small VSDs, I don't do anything other than I tell the patient that there is a small risk of infection in the VSD. And although the general recommendations are patients don't require antibiotics if they're having dental procedures or surgical procedures because those procedures may be associated with bugs in the bloodstream, I tend to tell my patients, you know, to err on the side of caution. If you're going to have dental work or any kind of instrumentation in your body, ask for some antibiotics because we just don't want to risk bugs getting into your bloodstream and potentially infecting the VSD. Other than that, I don't do anything with people with a very small restrictive VSD. Those very small ones are called restrictive VSDs. In patients with moderate-sized VSDs, I think these patients have to be followed up in a center which has an expertise in congenital heart disease. So there are these centers around the country. In those patients who have big holes, it is really important that if they're developing symptoms of breathlessness or they're developing any signs of pulmonary hypertension or any signs of aortic regurgitation or even the, the left ventricle getting bigger because of all this volume overload, that they be closed. As I say, if you have developed significant pulmonary hypertension, what can sometimes happen is that the pressures can go so high on the right side that actually the right-sided pressures become greater than the left-sided pressures, in which case the shunt uh, allows blood to go from the right heart to the left heart. So instead of the blood going from the left to the right through the hole, the blood starts going from the right to the left. The problem with that is this blood would have ordinarily gone to the lungs to pick up oxygen. Now it's bypassing the lungs and often these patients start looking blue. And this thing is called Eisenmenger syndrome. So Eisenmenger syndrome is a sign of advanced pulmonary hypertension causing the uh, blood to go the other way, bypassing the lungs. And at that point, you cannot close the VSD because it's way too difficult for the heart to pump blood into the lungs if there is no outlet for this blood. So having that hole in some way takes some of the pressure off the right ventricle, otherwise the right ventricle would completely blow up and fail. How do you close them? Well, that's dependent on where it is, how big it is, and there are two ways. The first is surgery, open heart surgery, to close the, close the VSD. But you can somehow sometimes do them through keyholes. So you can actually put a little device into through one of the veins, go through. So you put this uh, uh, thing which is coiled on a little catheter. The catheter is put in through one of the veins, goes into the right heart, goes down here. And then you can actually put this through the hole and then blow up a disc on one side, blow up a disc on the other side, detach, and then you've closed the VSD. The success rates of closure through keyhole in those people who are eligible for it are around about 95% and complication risks are very low. The only real complication risk that you should be aware of is that in about 6% of the patients, you can develop complete heart block. Now, the electrical, electrical connections of the heart go down the septum. So if you're interfering with the septum and if there's a big gap anyway, then you can actually block the connections and those people uh, need a pacemaker. But um, this is largely a run through VSCs. I hope you found it useful. If you find that this was useful, please do consider sharing it with um, anyone who may benefit. And again, I am so grateful for all that you do for me. Thank you so much.